to our video tutorial for this basic button up cat bandana. So Melba's stalking something that I have no idea what. <laughs> There's nothing there. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and hope to catch you soon. Thanks. Bye. What are you stalking? Okay, so for this tutorial you'll need some yarn. I've got this one here that I'm going to use today that I've used a few times to make up this pattern. It's a 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. So I'm making this up as a summer project. This yarn is possibly around a four to five weight. Um, you could use finer than this. You could use slightly bulkier than this. Um, whatever suits the time of the year that you're making it for and uh, the look that you're going for. You'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn. I'm using a 5mm hook today. You'll need a button to do up your bandana. Um, I'm using this one here. This is approximately 15mm across. Uh, you could use um, perhaps slightly smaller, um, larger you could certainly use, depending on the look that you're going for. I wouldn't use too small because... Um, you know, depending on the yarn that you're using, you might not be able to make a small enough buttonhole. Probably 15 millimeters and above, up to about 25, even 30 millimeters across would be uh, probably ideal. You'll need uh, possibly two uh, darning needles, one to weave in your ends, a slightly larger one, and then a smaller one to fit through the eyes of your button. Depending on the size of your button and its eyes, you may need that second hook. You'll need some scissors to snip off your ends and you'll need a tape measure to measure the circumference of your cat's neck. Okay, so here are two that I've made up previously. This one here is made in the same yarn as what I'm using today, just in a different colour. This one here is in a 100% cotton yarn and this also, as you can see, works up really nicely, especially with this, this uh, different colour. Um, cotton yarn. So the techniques that you'll need to know to make this is how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to half double crochet, how to double crochet decrease, how to weave in your ends and how to sew on a button. Okay so beginner friendly, uh, pretty quick to make up. It uh, starts to decrease really quickly so we're working from the top down and it's, it starts to decrease pretty quickly so it's it's you know pretty quick to make up and lots of fun so um, let's get started okay so just before we get started let's uh, talk a little bit about sizing this so this is made from the top down so this is the chain that you'll use for your foundation so to find out how long you need your foundation chain, measure the circumference of your cat's neck using your tape measure. Where's mine? Here it is. So measure the circumference of your cat's neck snugly, but not too tight. Okay, so you want a quite accurate uh, measurement. So for example, with Melba, her neck is pretty much exactly 23 and a half. Okay, so I usually round it up to 24 just to give that little bit extra. So you'll also have to decide if you want a more loose fitting bandana or a that sort of, you know, sits lower down on the chest or if you want one that's quite, um, you know, fitted to the neck. So make that decision. And if you're making the more snugly fit version, take the circumference of your cat's neck and add around five centimeters. Okay, so for example, with Melba, I'm gonna round her neck circumference up to 24, and then I'm going to add five centimeters to get a snug fit, which means around 29 centimeter chain. I actually prefer a looser fit for Melba, so I'm going to add a little bit extra onto that measurement. So if you want a looser fit, you can add anywhere between five and 10 centimeters extra. So you've already added your five centimeters for a snug fit and you can add, um, you know, above between five and 10 centimeters for a looser fit. So again, for example, uh, Melba, 24 centimeter neck circumference. I want a looser fit. I don't want it too loose, but I want a looser fit. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add, say, seven centimeters. Okay, so 
that will be around 31 centimetre chain. If you wanted looser, you could go up to adding 20, sorry, adding an extra 10 centimetres to the next circumference measurement. Okay, so adding anywhere from five, stopping at five centimetres, adding for the uh, snugger fit, looser fit up to 10 centimetres more, okay? So most cats, um, that will be okay. Please only use this as a guide. What I'll recommend that you do is that you check, once you've made your chain, check that it's, uh, you know, okay for your cat. You want, you know, either a snug, more snug fit or a looser fit. So you'll just check that once you've made your chain. Um, if you want, um, yeah, sorry, once you've, once you've made your bandana and then you, before you sew on your button, you can also check the circumference and make sure that you're good to go. But obviously you want to make sure at the beginning that you've got the circumference where you want it to be. So let's get started and perhaps that will become a little bit more clear as we move along. So take your yarn and slip knot onto your hook. However you do that. There's lots of different ways to slip knot. So however you do that. And now you'll go ahead and chain that measurement. So I'm chaining 31 centimetres, two, three. It actually doesn't matter the number that you chain. So I'm just going to chain up to 31 centimetres. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here after. Okay, so I've made my chain and I think I'm pretty much at where I want to be. Let me just check. Yeah, I'm at about 32, 33. So actually, I think I'm going to stick with that today. I'm going to um, make one just slightly larger for Melba. Um, Melba goes out on leash a lot, and, and to fit her harness that um, goes around her neck um, underneath the bandana, sometimes it's nice to just have that little bit of extra leeway. So I think that's what I'll, I'll do today. So I've taken her neck circumference, I've added... Um, of, said I was going to add seven but I've actually added about eight or nine there so it's going to be slightly looser but you've got your foundation chain and it'll be uh, most likely a different length to mine okay so moving on to row one chain two as your turning chain one and two now uh, locate the third chain from your hook so one two three and into that third chain half double crochet so if you need to brush up on any of these techniques, please do. Um, there's heaps of videos on YouTube, beginner's videos on YouTube. Otherwise, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And that's a half double crochet. Okay, so you'll do that all the way to the end of this first row. So along your foundation chain, half double crochet in each chain. Well, this yarn splits a little bit. Just undo that. Um, so half double crochet, one in each chain, all the way to the end of row one. And I'll meet you at the end of row one. Okay, so I'm just placing my last half double crochet into that final chain for row one. So that's row one completed. Now, do not chain here. Just turn your work. So we're going to start our decreases immediately. So just a reminder, we're working from the top down. So we'll be working in uh, these these decreases to get our our triangle shape or our yeah our triangle shape. I guess it's a triangle. Yeah. So we're going to start working the decreases straight away. So for row two, like I said, don't chain. Skip for the first stitch, and in the second stitch, place your half double crochet. Okay, now we're going to create the buttonhole at this point. So um, depending on the size of your button will depend on the, the size of the hole, obviously. Now for my size button, what I'm going to do is chain two and I'm going to skip two and then place my half double crochet or next half double crochet in that third stitch along. So I'm just going to double check that that's fine for my button, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be. Yep, it's fine for my button. So you'll do the same thing, and you'll either decrease the size of your button, perhaps you'll just chain one, skip one, 
Um, you might want to increase the size of your button hold, so you'd chain three, skip three. If you've got an extra large button, you may even need to uh, chain four, skip four. It will also depend on the, the weight of the yarn that you're using and the size of the hook. Okay, so you'll just have to tailor that for yourself. But however many you chain is the number that you skip to create your buttonhole. And then you'll just move along placing one half double crochet into each stitch in row two all the way along until you reach the second to last stitch in the row. And I'll meet you there. Okay, so I'm... I'm at my second to last stitch in this uh, row two. So we go, what we're going to do with these last two stitches is we're going to um, do a double crochet decrease these two together. So yarn over, insert your hook into the second to last stitch. Yarn over, pull through. You've got three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two and stop there. Yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull the, through the first two of those five loops on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through all three. Okay? So, once again, if you need to brush up on the, the double crochet decrease, then please do. Um, otherwise, we're going to move on to row three. Okay, so remembering, do not chain to start uh, the next row, just turn. Skip the first stitch and place your half double crochet into the second stitch. And then you'll just work your half double crochets all the way along. Actually, I should just mention here, just be careful when you do those decreases at the end of each row. So we'll be doing them from now on. Just be careful that you don't pull them too tight, okay? Because they can misshape your work a little bit. It'll make it sort of curl up. So just make sure that you're not doing those last stitches uh, too tight in the previous row okay and then continue on with row three until you come to your buttonhole so you half double crochet you can see see that's just slightly lifting up so it's just slightly tight I tend to be a crochet crocheter who, who crochets on the tighter side, so I just have to be a little bit careful of that myself. So just, um, yeah, be careful there. If you need to undo it, go back and make sure it's a bit looser if it's curling up. I think this is going to be okay. It's not too tight. I can just sort of shimmy it around, and I think that'll be fine. So, if, But if you need to undo it, please, please do it at this point. Just make sure it's not too tight. So I'm going to keep working along here in row three, half double crochet up into the buttonhole, and I'll show you what we'll do at, once we get to the buttonhole. Okay, so I've worked up to my buttonhole, and then I'm going to place, because I've got two chains in my buttonhole, I'm going to place the first of my half double crochets into that first chain and then um, depending if you've got a larger buttonhole you will put another half double crochet in the next stitch or two depending on how many but you want to leave one chain plus the last stitch in this row to cre create your decrease okay so whatever that means for you um, I've so I've got my one chain left plus my last stitch so I'm going to do the double crochet decrease with that last chain and the last stitch in that row pull through all three okay so once again make sure that you're not pulling that too tight just check that out and then turn your work without chaining okay moving on to row four now from row four we're going to change things slightly so um what we will do for, for from row four onwards is we're going to actually skip the first two stitches and then we're going to place a double crochet in the third stitch. Okay. So a double crochet just gives us that little bit of extra height on the end there. Okay. And then we're going to half double crochet as for our previous rows all the way along until we do our double crochet decrease on the end here. So one thing I just want to point out actually before we move along is when we're, we're decreasing we get this little these little loops that come across the top here. So just be careful that you don't 
skip this last stitch that can sometimes be hiding under these two loops. Okay, so when you do your decrease, make sure you're getting that second and the last stitch. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of heads up on that before we move along. They can sometimes be a little bit hidden. Sometimes these loops come over and it's easy to miss this last stitch. So just be careful about that. So for row four onwards, we're just working our half double crochets all the way along through this central area. And then at the end of each row, we're doing our double crochet decrease as we've been doing and then at the beginning of each row we're skipping two and double crocheting into the third stitch as we did at the beginning of this row okay so we're just going to continue to repeat row four from here on out until we get down to the apex of our bandana so um, it'll be slightly different for everyone how we finish off this area. So I'm going to uh, run through that with you for sure. But we'll uh, keep on working. So what you'll, you'll be doing, just working on your decreases. And I'll meet you once we get down in this area here. So just to recap, continue to repeat this row four until you get down to that apex area of your bandana. And we'll work through that together. So catch you soon. Okay, so just for one final time, I'm running through the end and the beginning of each row from row four. So I'm doing my double crochet decrease in these last two stitches in the row. And then I'm turning my work, just making sure I'm not pulling that too tight. I'm skipping two, the first two stitches, and then I'm placing my double crochet into that third stitch okay and then my half double crochets until I get to the end of the row again so um, continue on your merry way and I'll once again like I said I'll meet you down at the apex of your bandana okay so I've reached um, my apex here so I've got one two three four stitches left so um, like I said before it will be different for everyone depending on the number of stitches that you had at the beginning Okay, so um, what I have to leave you to do here is be a bit creative with how you finish off your apex, okay, depending on how many stitches you've got left. So I'll show you what I'm going to do with this particular one. So I've got, um, like I said, four left. So I'm going to do uh, what I've been doing for all the other rows, which is skip the first two and put my double crochet into that third stitch. And then I'm just going to do a half double crochet in that last stitch. Okay, so there's no, there's no strict rules on how you finish this off. Now turn. Now I've got these last two left and I think what I'm just going to do is do a half double crochet into, oops, split again. Do a half double crochet into that last stitch. Yeah, there we go. And let's see how that looks. And I'm happy with that as my apex. So some sort of combination of what you've been doing with the double crochets and the half double crochets, even the double crochet decrease, some, some, some combination of those three stitches to create your apex, depending on how many stitches you had left, whether you had that even number, an odd number, it's, you know, it's going to be slightly different for each uh, neck circumference. So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to, I think what I might do is I might just uh, slip stitch into the side here. Let's just see if that's necessary. So, you know, don't be afraid, even though, you know, these are tutorials that give you a guide, don't be afraid to, um, you know, get a bit creative with what you need to do for your crochet. Is that gonna be, yeah. So you could just slip stitch, actually, I don't even think I need to. Let's not even, let's not even do that. I think I'm just going to yarn over and pull through. And then when I sew, when I sew in my end, I'm just going to bring it down a little bit down this side. Okay, so once again, you could have slipped, you could slip stitch. Check out your own work and see what it needs. And I'll snip that end off. Oops. 
There we go. So yeah, especially as you're learning to crochet, don't be scared to uh, to just experiment, and you know to give you a bit more confidence as you learn. So now I'm just going to weave in this this tail end at the bottom here. So let's see what we can do. So you can see that my, my I'm actually pretty happy with that with that uh, apex it's you know it's pretty even and nice I'm just going to but I'm just going to bring that end across to this other side and just make sure that it's nice and even there yeah if I pull it too much too tight it it sort of misshapes it so again just weave in your end according to what you need don't pull too tight and misshape your work Try to weave it into the back, perhaps choose which side you want to be the back. And I'll just weave it into the back there. And here comes Melba, so my table might shake around a bit. Okay, so I'll just go through a few times. Just disguise my tail end and secure it. Yes, here she comes. <laughs> so apologies for the table shaking around. And oh, pull that through. There we go. So just work it so it's nice and flat. Okay, so I've just finangled my way into the apex looking as I want it to look. So you finish yours off how you want it to look and then because you so you could make it kind of flatter at the bottom here you could uh, make it I'd prefer it to be a little bit pointy so however you want that to look and then snip off your end so now we've got another end to uh, weave in and I'll do that off camera and then what's left is sewing on your button. So at this point, what I recommend that you do is that you uh, check the uh, neck circumference, okay? So, because you can adjust a little bit depending on where you place your, your button. So you might want to place it a little bit further in or right close to the edge, depending on the, um, you know, the fit that you want. So just check it on your cat at this point and, and work out where you need to place your button. So I'm just going to place mine right in the right in the corner here. And you can use thread or you can use a piece of your yarn um, depending on the size of your needle. So what I'm going to do um, to get some thread that matches exactly, I'm just going to split my yarn because it's a little bit too thick as it is. So I'm going to split my yarn and it will depend on the yarn that you're using if you need to do this or not. So I'm just going to split split my yarn and get a thinner, thinner piece and then it matches perfectly. But like I said, you could sew it on with, with um, a piece of thread. Okay, so I've split my yarn and threaded my needle with that yarn. So I'm just going to sew my button right in the corner there. So what I do is I just pull through and then depending on how many holes your button's got, you'll sew the four holes through the four holes or like mine, you might just have two. So just basic sewing on of a button and make sure it's nice and secure. So I'll go through a couple more times there. And I think that's about all that my button holes will take as far as thickness, but that's nice and secure already. And then taking the two tails, I'll just tie a knot in the back here just to secure it even further just a double knot simple double knot and then taking my larger darning needle I will let's just snip that a little bit 
taking my larger darning needle I'll just thread that and then I'll weave in that tail end as well as my beginning tail end as well so I'll do that off camera and I'll come back and finish with you soon okay so I've just finished weaving in that last tail end so I'll snip off that end and you're done so <laughs> and Mel was here just to <laughs> say goodbye so congratulations that's your basic button up cat bandana so to wear this you can uh, leave it as it is but what I like to do is I like to just fold over the top part here and let it sit like that underneath the chin so congratulations we'd love to see photos of your cat wearing his or her bandana so <laughs> That's <laughs> under my table. So please send your photos along to either cat <laughs> catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on Instagram and Facebook at catventurous.crochet. Um, you will find all the details of how to reach us in the description box below. So thanks very much for being here. We really appreciate it and hope to catch you soon. Thanks. Bye. I have no idea what she's stalking. <laughs> you crazy nut. You crazy nut. <laughs> There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Are you watching yourself on the screen, maybe? <laughs> that could be it. Okay. Is that enough, Melba? Thanks very much. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Melba. Good girl.